What is crack guys? It is Nathan here, aka the Rambling Kern and the head instructor of Kern School of Combat. So what I want to talk to you about today, which you might have guessed obviously from the video title and what I'm wearing and what I'm carrying, is Irish martial arts. So the big question I often get is what are they? Why haven't I heard of them and you know, what are the existing styles and what it's all about? So essentially Irish martial arts fall into three main categories. So we have the survived, the revived, and the recreate. So the first two are the ones that I focus on and the ones that I try to uh, practice and promote the most. So when I go to survived, we have two ex surviving styles of Irish stick fighting. So that involves these, the shillelagh or the bata or the bataract. Now there are two current surviving styles. There is the Doyle style and the Antrim style. Now, often, there's also the questions come up about these styles. These are probably the most controversial things within the realm of Irish martial arts. Really, for some reason, it really, really seems to be uh, especially stick fighting and bataract. I don't know why. I have a few theories as to why, which if people are interested, I may dive into in future videos. But these are the two surviving styles. Now, we also have the revived styles, which is where collar and elbow falls in. So collar and elbow, there's no surviving teachers, there's no surviving schools, unlike there is within Badarat, within Irish stick fighting. So the Dora cell, the Andrew cell are the two that are currently surviving. And there could be more out there, we don't know. But what we do know is that those are the ones that have survived. And Colour and Elbow is an art we're reviving. So we know that that art was there. We know that people practiced it. We know some of the techniques. And unfortunately, we don't have any books. We don't have technique manuals. We don't have the things that you would see within, say, the German or the Italian schools of fencing. Um, for example, the likes of Mayer or Mayer uh, or Fiora de Libby. Really? <laughs> now my uh, Italian is terrible, so apologies. Um, but Fiore would be the, the classic example. So an age-old fencing treatise that's very in-depth um, and goes through a lot of detail. Now we do have fencing manuals in Ireland and they will be a big focus of the school uh, over the coming years. So that is a thing that does exist. However, those are mainly focused on what would kind of be deemed gentlemanly weapons. So you have the small sword, for example, which later became the foil, or well, the foil and the small sword kind of coexisted simultaneously. They were a sparring version and a real world version, so to speak. Long story short, there is Irish schools of fencing. They were very popular um, and they will be something that we'll focus on and talk about. So. We have, as I say, the Survived, which you'll see within the world of Ballarat. We have the Revived, which you can point to the world of Colour and Elbow. Then we have the Recreated. So this is, for me personally, quite a touchy area and a touchy subject. So the easiest way I can explain this, and it comes up a lot with Irish stick fighting and just Irish martial arts in general, because we don't have written sources. Now we have tons and tons and tons and tons of references to these activities. So for example, the faction fights in Ireland um, or one-on-one -on -one duels with sticks, um, all sorts of references to these being used in combat and people using these in an actual combat setting. The thing is we don't have manuals because of a number of reasons. So the classic one that everyone will point to is lack of literacy within the Irish peasantry and they were the ones using the bata or the shillelagh. It was a poor person's weapon. So if you want to compare it to a foreign martial art, I think a screamer would be a good example, where you have a very in-depth complex art, or multitude of arts I should say, and they don't have written sources up until you know the mid 20th century because the people practicing and teaching those were not, you know, um, overly literate or they were not, you know, aristocrats, let's say. Now that's where the skills of fencing come in. So you do see written texts for those, but they were, you know, gentlemanly arts. And that's where the waters get a little bit muddy. So when it comes to the revived or the recreated arts, I should say, 
this is kind of where things get a bit muddy and where things get a bit confusing. So for me, if someone was to say, I've studied, so for myself personally, I've studied a screen that for at least half a decade, I'm not really too sure how long. If I were to say, right, I'm Irish, I own an Irish stick, I've done stick fighting, I'm just going to apply what I've learned in a screen map to this, and then that's, you know, Nathan's style of Irish stick fighting, and that's Irish stick fighting. Yes and no, right? So, to put it simply another way, if I was to go to Japan, and I've done kickboxing, and I was to put on a karate and say, right, now I'm starting Nathan's School of Karate. It doesn't mean that that's karate. It's the same with stick fighting. It's the same with Badarakt. It's the same with any other Irish martial arts. Just because you have understanding of other ones doesn't necessarily mean it is that thing. Yes, it's your interpretation of it. And I respect that. And if you're open about that, props to you. Um, you know, you can really get a lot through cross-training. We all know that. Um, you know, different styles mixing together make for really interesting things. But the thing is, you shouldn't be telling people that like, oh, this is my traditional style and this is, goes way back when it doesn't. It's just that smoke and mirrors and that's really not what the truth of those arts is about. So I know this video is a bit of a ramble, but you know, hence the, uh, the name of the channel. But the main thing that I wanted to kind of go through was what makes these arts these arts. So the big one, I think I've kind of touched on there already. Why haven't you heard of them? So a lot of these were very popular in you know these practices so for example the faction fights using the shillelagh or color novel wrestling these kind of reached their peak in the 19th century um, and the main reason you wouldn't have heard of them is because many of the people practicing them died simply put um, between the famine wars of independence uh, civil wars world wars which you know many Irish people fought in as well as mm, huge huge amounts of immigration a lot of the poor people left and anyone who's lives in ireland and knows anything about irish culture knows that there's become quite an aversion to violence we were known as the fighting irish we're not really i think that like many other things have become a bit of a stereotype that irish people like to move away from so that's kind of part of why i'm doing what i'm doing with the channel that i kind of want to change people's opinions on our martial past because it's something we should be proud of like many other cultures and that is sometimes where I think the road bumps come in to talking about these things. So you look at any other country in Europe, they have traditional styles. So France, for example, you have Sabat, you have Lacan, Portugal, you have Joba de Pau. You know, you look at any country, they have them. They have a multitude of these arts. Um, Joba de Pau, I think, is a great example where there wasn't any written sources. It was mainly practiced amongst peasantry. It was a stick fighting art. And it survived through a handful of people, through a multitude of civil wars and you know various other things. So I think that's a good example to look at as to how these arts have continued to survive just in different forms. So currently we have our surviving arts. Within Badarak we have our two disciplines. We have our revived arts which I would look at collar and elbow and as well as various styles of Irish fencing. So the main three styles that we have within manuals from Irish masters would be small sword, spadroon and broadsword. And then we have the recreated arts. So ones that people have created and interpreted from their own understanding. Now these are something completely different and they're not really historical as such. And I'm not one for lineages or anything like that, but I think it's important culturally to preserve where an art came from and to understand where the art came from and why it is how it is. So if you're interested in these subjects and me kind of diving a bit more into them, do let me know. Um, I'd be more than happy to do videos covering them. And I do intend to do that over the coming weeks and months. Obviously there'll be a little break with Christmas. Um, but I just kind of wanted to touch on the important notes of what Irish martial arts are some of the reasons why you may or may not have heard of them and just to kind of open up the debate so if you're interested or if you have your own takes on this please comment below let me know what you think um, if you're interested in learning a bit more about the specifics of these arts please let me know I'm more than happy to, to dive into them and 
you know, if you just want to know a bit about the background and as to why these arts came and went in the ways that they did, you know, I'm um, more than happy to discuss that too. Each of these arts individually, you know, rose in popularity and declined for various different reasons. So it's very interesting to know the hows and whys of those things. And culturally, I think it's very important to preserve these. So any piece of cultural identity, such as Irish martial arts, I think are very important to hold on to and something that should not be forgotten. There is a big stigma around them, I think, and from interacting with various people. Um, and it's something that I want to get rid of because I'm proud of the arts that are within Ireland and the arts that we have. And I think as a nation we should be too. Um, so if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll also post links down below if you're interested in learning these arts um, or if you just want to get in touch and ask any questions. So thank you very much for your time, I appreciate you watching and uh, Islam.